Hello and welcome to another What's Inside. Today we are looking at National Geographic Global Pursuit. Global Pursuit is from 1987, put out by National Geographic, and is a sort of a learning game as well as just your standard kind of uh, board game. So let's open this up, take a look at it. Uh, there's a lot of loose little pieces in here, so I'm going to take the lid off before I show you the sides of the box. So you just have the National Geographic logo, and it says Global Pursuit. My copy's a little janked up, as you can tell, but this one is complete. So nothing inside the lid, and right away we've got our rule book, which is actually stapled, which is really nice. And it's pretty straightforward rules. The list of contents of the box is very, very vague, so don't trust that too much. Uh, there's going to be some discrepancy in that they don't tell you exactly how much of what you're supposed to get. This copy should be complete, so we'll take a look at it and see what we've got here. Alright, so you get your rule book and a map of the world, which is kind of nice. It's just a standard map of the globe. Sorry, Flat Earthers, it's round. Alright, then we've got our contents of the box. There are 12 of each of these type of hex tiles. You've got a D12, which is just standard D12. It's just larger and it's nicely weighted. It is a very, very heavy D12, very nice, great for rolling. Any real great gamer is going to appreciate this die. Then we've got 108 of these wild cards and we've got 54 of each of the others and they are correlated with this. So we've got Planet Earth is blue, uh, Historic Happenings is purple, yellow is people and places, and green is people and products. And there are 54 of each of these, like I said, and 108 of the wild. Now there are also these tokens, which are just really cheap plastic pickup uh, tiddlywinks type pieces. So there's three colors, you got blue, white, and yellow. Each one represents a different point value based on the question you answer, that sort of thing. So it's how scoring is done in the game. And as far as I could tell, there's about 50 of each color. I didn't want to sit and count them out because I have better things to do. And it's really weirdly obsessive compulsive to do that. But there's a big pile of them here and I'm not that bored. So let's take a look at all the pieces here individually and see what they look like and see how they've held up. Okay, so we'll start with the map pieces. This is people and products. It's the green ones. Like I said, there's 12 of each of these sets. So let's take a look at what these look like. And they're just different map pieces on the back. And the goal is, of course, to create a map. That's it. That's all 12 of the people and products. Let's take a look at the next one, which is the yellow people and places. As you can tell, we've got the same general map layout, but with different uh, sort of design. So each one should form its own map, I think. I haven't played this a really long time, but as I recall, if you lay all these out, 
it forms its own map. This was based off of a game idea called Dodecahedron, and it's sort of a uh, globe idea. You can form a globe with it and form a dodecahedron. Alright, let's look at historic happenings. Uh, so far the map designs look really good. The fold-out wall map is actually a little better, I think, as far as design. It's more informative, whereas these are specific to a, a type of thing that they want to cover, like historic happenings and economy, that sort of thing. But I think the map design is good. The cardboard is a little flimsy. It's very, very thin, but it has held up pretty well from just minor use. Uh, I don't think I've played this a whole lot, so the edges get scuffed really easily because they are pointed, so you have to watch out for that. But otherwise, it's held up amazingly well considering its age. So here we have Planet Earth is the last group. I like this map a little better. It's got all the cool contours and the ocean floor, that sort of thing, plate tectonics, all the fun stuff. Okay, that's all the map pieces. Now the cards are just trivia questions. I'm going to present them without reading them. The important thing here is that each one has three trivia questions of varying difficulty. And the trivia questions are actually on this side, on the white side. So you'll want to keep it face down so that you don't expose the answers to the person you're talking to. And the question side is actually glossier and nicer than the back. The back is really cheap, almost... Um, almost unprotected feel whereas this side actually has a lot more gloss to it and it really hurts the cards because the back it feels almost acidic over time just like if you store comic books or magazines for a long time they have that sort of grainy feel these have the same thing so it's disappointing they didn't protect the cards better so if you get this game you might want to sleeve the cards even though it's not going to fit in the box quite like it did before it might be a good idea to protect these so they don't get damaged further because this side is largely unprotected or just poorly protected and they will scuff up and tear. So let's take a quick look at the question side so if you're missing a card you can replace it. I'll try and zoom in a little more. Yeah, we're going to start with people and products. You're going to hear every truck decide to go by my house while I'm filming because that's how they operate. And there'll probably be a train at some point just because it can.
Okay, that's all the green cards. Some of the trivia in this may be slightly outdated because this game is more than 30 years old, but it still could be worth playing. There's a lot going on here, and it, trivia games are generally pretty fun anyway. Because of the poor quality of the one side of each of these cards, the cards do stick together very easily. So you want to be extra careful when going through them. Hopefully I'm not going to skip any so that you can see any, what you're missing if you're missing any of them. Okay, that's the purple deck, Historic Happenings.
Okay, and that's the yellow deck. Okay, let's look at the blue deck. And that is the blue deck. The peach deck is the largest deck with 108 cards, so it is literally twice the size of the other decks individually.
And finally, and that's all the cards. That is 1987's National Geographic Global Pursuit. Global Pursuit is a pretty interesting game. You, we've seen what's in the box. Card quality is pretty mediocre, but the tiles are pretty decent. As long as you use gentle to moderate use of it, it should hold up for quite a while longer. Uh, the cards, if you're missing some of them, it's not going to be a huge deal because there are three questions on each card, so you could get away with losing probably half the cards and still be able to play the game. The tiles, however, you do need to have all of those in order to really be able to play the game effectively. If the dice is missing, or the, the die rather, I don't need comments about it. If the die is missing, you can replace it with a standard D12. It's nothing particularly special. There's no symbols on it. It's just a D12, so if you lose that one, it stinks to lose the original piece, but you could substitute something else for it. So all in all, it's a pretty solid game. I would definitely recommend adding this if you like trivia games. And there's a lot of really good trivia questions that still hold up. Some of them are probably going to be outdated, like I said. But overall, it's a pretty solid, still functional and playable game. There's a lot of good questions about history and Earth and stuff like that that are still uh, able to be used today. If, if you come across one that's outdated, just skip it and use a different question. So, that being said, we've seen what's inside. It's a pretty cool game. I definitely would recommend it for trivia fans. Uh, it shouldn't be very expensive to track it down it is from 1987 but that doesn't mean it's going to cost you a lot i found my copy at a thrift store paid a couple bucks for it i think i paid five bucks for it and it's worth it i've had it for years now and it's been a fun game to break out occasionally with my other friends or trivia fans that actually will play a board game if it's trivia based so that's going to do it for this one as always thank you so much for listening and supporting the channel if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss future unboxings and reviews. And we hope to see you on the next one.